Welcome. I'm Pastor Michael Haar. You are joining us at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Topeka, Kansas for Ash Wednesday worship on this February 17th. For those of you not familiar with me, I am a retired Lutheran pastor and chaplain who has been a member of, this, of Our Savior's Lutheran Church for many years. Pastor Jim Peters and his family continue to quarantine in their home, and all are doing okay at this time. Pastor Jim will join us from home for the children's message and the Ash Wednesday sermon. On Ash Wednesday, we begin our 40-day journey towards Easter with a day of fasting and repentance, marking our heads, our foreheads with dust. We acknowledge that we die and return to earth. At the same time, the dust traces the life-giving cross indelibly marked on our foreheads at baptism. While we journey through Lent to return to God, we have already been reconciled to God through Christ. And we humbly pray for God to make our hearts clean while we rejoice that now is the day of salvation. Returning to our baptismal call, we more intentionally bear the fruits of mercy and justice in the world. Let us continue with the gathering song. Psalm 51 will be read responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak, and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners will be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God, of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, Open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O God, you will not despise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, 
out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness, and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hello. It's time for today's children's sermon, so welcome girls and boys. And uh, as you can tell, today's children's sermon is coming from my home, so you can see a little bit of it back behind me. You may not be able to recognize this, but this is a palm from Palm Sunday last year. Every year, I try to keep a palm from Palm Sunday, and then I put it behind a cross that hangs on the wall of my office at church. And so every time I see this palm and that cross, it helps me to remember what Jesus did for me and what he did for all of us. Today, as you already know, is Ash Wednesday. And this is another day when we use palms to help us remember. Only the palms don't look like this, they look like this. Inside this little metal container that I have here with me are ashes that are made from dry palm branches that have been burned. You probably remember that a part of our worship service today involves everybody who wants them getting a little bit of ashes like these on their foreheads, marked in the shape of a cross. But do you remember why we do this? Well, I'm not gonna be able to be at church today to, to uh, apply or impose the ashes on you and anybody who comes. But Pastor Michael Haar is going to be there and he's going to be doing that for me. And when he is putting the ashes on, he's going to be saying the same words to everybody. He'll say, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. What those words and what the ashes mean is that nobody lives forever. One day you, me, everybody in our family, everybody who receives the ashes, and everybody everywhere will have to die. And honestly, I hope that doesn't happen for a long, long time. But someday it will, not all at once, of course, but it will happen to all of us. And these ashes remind us of that. But another thing that the ashes remind us of is that we belong to God. And no matter what happens to us in life, that will never change. God made us and God loves us and we belong to God. I am really glad that you are here for the beginning of this new season of Lent. And if your family comes to the church for ashes today, think about what they really mean. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this Ash Wednesday and this beginning of a new Lenten season. We ask you to bless us, bless our families, and bless our whole church as we begin this season together. Help us to remember that we belong to you and to live that way for all of our lives. We ask for all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord. 
Amen. Thanks a lot. A reading from Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of my God. They ask of me righteous judgments they delight to draw near to God. Why do we feast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless, the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, and pointing the figure, finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt you shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading from Second Corinthians. We entrust you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God. For our sake he made men, he, for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As you work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found in our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commanded ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions and hardships calamities and beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, 
with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet we are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Saint, the sixth chapter of Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Be aware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, Do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward. But whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Whenever you fast, do not look the small like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. 
For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Here I am again coming to you from my home. And you know, there is little that is worse than breaking up the gospel and the sermon with announcements, but that's what I have to do in these circumstances. So first, uh, a few uh, announcements for me. And uh, I wanna start off by giving you an update on all of us. As uh, you may have heard uh, by now, um, both Patrice and Nicholas tested positive to the coronavirus. Um, so we're all quarantined now. Uh, I'm happy to be able to, re to report that uh, it seems to be a mild case for both of them. And uh, I hope that it stays that way. Um, I am going to be, the, the rules are for me that I have to quarantine for 20 days from the day of when Nicholas first started to show symptoms, which was last Tuesday. Um, so that puts me out until the end of this month, and I'm really sorry about that. Uh, but keep in mind, you are welcome to call me at home if you need to talk with me about something. Uh, and I'm still going to be meeting uh, my obligations that I can while working from home. Uh, for instance, this Sunday, you can join me for the adult Sunday school class, uh, which I'll be teaching over Zoom. And by then, I'll be able to give you an even more current update as to how we're all doing. Uh, let's see, what else? If uh, you picked up a lint in a bag, I just wanted to give you a few pointers about this. And again, uh, I really want you to use this and what's inside this bag uh, in a way that's best for you. But if you would like to follow along with uh, the progress that we're going to be making through this bag and the order that we're going to be following, then let me suggest that between today and next Tuesday, which is February the 23rd, that you take a little time and use the guide that's inside, but also uh, reflect on the first item on the list, which is the bag of sand, okay? Uh, finally, I really want to say thank you to Michael Haar, uh, who is filling in for me this week. Uh, he picked the week where there's a lot to do, so I really appreciate him. Uh, I appreciate everybody who's there today uh, recording this service, too. Thank you all so much. Okay, I suppose I should warn you that there are spoilers ahead. What are spoilers? They're those articles or posts that give away the ending of a movie, a TV show, or a book, or that give away so many key points of the story that you already know what's going to happen before you even begin. Your experience is spoiled because you already know who committed the crime before you even open the book. You already know who the bachelor is going to choose before you've even had a chance to watch the finale. So yes, I'm about to spoil something for you. And if you don't want to know what it is, you'd better mute the sound right now. Are you ready? This whole thing is going to end in a garden. 
On Sunday, March 28th, we're going to be reading from the Passion according to St. Mark. And towards the end of the story, we'll learn that after Jesus has died on the cross, his body will be taken down and given to Joseph of Arimathea at Joseph's request. And Joseph will take Jesus' body and lay it in a tomb that has been hewn out of the rock. And John's gospel includes the detail that the tomb could be found in a garden. And of course, three days later, or a week later on, in our time, on Sunday, April the 4th, we'll find ourselves back in that same garden where we'll discover that the stone has been rolled away from in front of the tomb. And now that I've ruined everything for you, let's go back to the beginning. Today is Ash Wednesday, our first step into this new season, only the first of 40 days that are to come. And remember, even though I can't be with you at church today, Pastor Michael Haar will be at church today. Come to the church between the hours of noon and 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. today, and Michael will give you some ashes. You won't even have to leave your car if you don't want to. And with an offer like that, it seems like we're just about as far from the garden as you can get. What could be less gardeny than a bunch of dried up, burned up, ground up palms spread in the shape of a cross on your forehead? But at the very least, this is a day that invites us to X, Y, A, examine your attitude, and X, Y, B, examine your behavior while you're at it. Both our readings today from the prophet Isaiah and Matthew's gospel get us into it. The problem both Isaiah and Jesus in Matthew tell us is that we do the good things that we do because we want to be seen doing them. We want to get credit for the things that we do. Otherwise, what's the use in doing them? Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? It's the hypocrites who loved to sound a trumpet when they give alms, who make sure that they are standing where everyone can see them when they pray. And when that is our attitude, when that is our behavior, perhaps the attention is all that we can expect to get out of the things that we do. And so the season of Lent also invites us to keep going a little deeper. Rather than keeping on doing things for ourselves, to begin to do them for others. To loose the bonds of injustice. To undo the thongs of the yoke. To let the oppressed go free to share bread with the hungry, to be more open to the homeless poor, to cover the naked, to cease the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, to satisfy the needs of the afflicted. That's what Lent is really all about. It's not about ourselves. It's about others. 
And it's about growing more fully into the kind of people God is calling us to be. And what comes after that? Well, I'll let the words of Isaiah tell it. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. And there we find the garden again. May this be a fruitful season for you and for those you care about. May we all learn a little better to rise above ourselves, our own concerns, our own needs for attention and approval. May we all learn a little more about service. This season may end in a garden, but it begins in one too. And it leads us on towards life with God. Amen. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil, and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipleship of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of God's word and sacrifice. 
Let us continue our journey through these 42 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that we have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God our self-indulgent appetites, and the ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penance, reminding us that only the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.
dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. From dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. From dust thou art, to dust thou shalt return. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. As we journey through the wilderness of Lent, let us return to God who gives us the joy of Easter's promise. Compassionate God, you meet us right where we are and invite us to live in the joy and freedom of forgiveness. Give us strength to walk with Jesus all season long. God of promise, hear our prayer. God of truth, you call us to turn away from sin and return to your gracious love. Help all people to learn the ways of service, reconciliation, and love. God of the promise, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Caring God, you lift up the poor and help those who are downtrodden. Be swift to hear the cries of all who lack the basic needs of life, of all who are unemployed and underemployed. God of the promise, hear our prayer. God of healing, 
You are present with all who are in need of your care. Return to good health all who have struggled with COVID-19 and any and all of our family and friends whom we now remember before you. God of the promise. Hear our prayer. Saving God, you have redeemed us through the waters of our baptism. Bless all those who are baptized and all who are prepared to be baptized. God of the promise. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear us as we call out to you and renew and upholding us in faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. On this Ask Wednesday, I want to thank you for your participation and continued support of this church by prayer, service of God through your daily activities of love and support to your family and neighbors. Financial support can be provided by mailing offerings to the church, by bringing offerings to the church office when it's open, or by bringing, giving online at the church's website.
Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew in us the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from our time and trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may God give you strength to rise up in ancient ruins, wisdom to follow in the cross of Christ, and the guidance of the Spirit in the desert places of our world. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be a good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.